Land prices today are at levels you could only have dreamed about back in the mid-90s. The reasons are on both the supply side and the demand side. But if you thought supply was tight now, MLA analysis suggests that over the next few years, things could get a whole lot tighter. The question is, what are Australian land producers going to do about it? Daryl Anderson reports. It's the Adelaide Show and the Lamb Burger Smackdown is on. In the blue corner, the best burger chefs in South Australia. In the red, white and blue corner... They're, they're both the, probably the best burger makers in America. I don't want to upset our um, Australian guys, but these guys are so good. These guys are Anthony Jaquette and Christina Vanny, top-notch California chefs, winners of an MLA-sponsored competition across the USA for chefs to design burgers made with Australian lamb. That's the thing that's so nice about the lamb here, is Australian free-range lamb, is that they have the most fantastic existence. Their entries won them a whirlwind paddock-to-plate tour of the Australian lamb industry. It brought them here to Susie Kidman's place at Coonawarra in South Australia. What I like the best is, number one, it's versatility. It can take on a lot of different flavours. It can take on big and bold flavours, and then it can even go light too. And it takes on sweet and savoury applications. It's great that here everything's sort of organic by default, that everything is mm -hmm. just, it's so natural. It's just the way it's supposed to be, and we don't get in the way of it. Americans have taken to Australian lamb over the past 20 years, thanks first to trade liberalisation, which opened up the market, then to our ability to produce and promote a product that's right for the US market. And it's a market that's growing. I think the American consumer is becoming a lot more savvy. Uh, and you know, while we do have really good hot spots for lamb consumption in the US, being in, on the west coast, uh, the northeast, and also in Florida, mainly through Mediterranean backgrounds or Hispanic backgrounds, I think a lot more mainstream Americans are starting to look at lamb and use it. In fact, the signs are good for lamb consumption globally through to 2015. Between now and 2015, the world will require an additional 1.6 million tonnes of lamb. Problem is, and for lamb producers this is kind of a nice problem to have, the total world production of lamb based on current forecasts isn't going to increase nearly fast enough to cover that extra demand for lamb. Increased production in China and India will meet most of their own increased needs, but beyond those markets it looks like there'll be an almighty gap to fill by 2015. There's a, a balance of something like 300,000 tonnes, which is sort of up for grabs for the international market. In 2009, Australia's entire lamb production was 432,000 tonnes, so a shortfall of 300,000 tonnes is a pretty significant opportunity. MLA's worked out a scenario of three factors which in combination could fill that gap by 2015. First thing on the list is reproductive performance to achieve a faster increase in lamb marking percentages right across the country. At the current rate, lambs weaned per ewe is edging up at about 1% a year. In MLA's scenario, weaning rates would need to increase by 2% a year. The second variable is the composition of the flock. More ewes and further adjustment in their genetic makeup. The current uh, breeding flock is somewhere around 40 million breeders. If we were to entirely fill the gap, we need a, a ewe population of about 53 million breeders, of which about half will be merinos and half will be non-merinos. The next thing we need to look at is the, is the size of the lambs we produce. Over the last few years, we've managed to increase the carcass weight average by about 100 grams a year. But it should be possible to accelerate that rate of increase really quite dramatically. The boldest scenario is to increase carcass weights by 600 grams per annum, in addition to the incremental growth around marking rates and, and composition of the flock, that 300,000 tonne gap will be closed. But never losing sight of eating quality. We've got to keep an eating quality surveillance or watch constant. And uh, that's ultimately the determinant. So if there is a cutoff, then the eating quality will tell us. While MLA's three supply factors for filling the gap might have been more about testing the limits than setting targets, 
The new industry strategic plan is not shying away from them. Susie Kidman is just finishing up a long stint on the council. MLA's three planks um, in relation to increasing production are very closely aligned to, to what we um, uh, drew, drew up in this strategic plan. It's a little bit like uh, the, the saying, show me the money. You know, if the Australian producers can see that there is a, a decent uh, buck to be made in, in this uh, industry, I think they'll do their level best to achieve those outcomes for, uh, for their own business prosperity. While consumers want to eat more lamb, they don't actually have to. And if the supply isn't there, they'll have to satisfy themselves with other options like pork or chicken or fish or tofu. We're in a position where we can capitalise on a situation that has emerged for all sorts of reasons. And, um, and if we don't grab that opportunity, uh, then we are going to miss you know, the opportunity of a lifetime. Back at the Adelaide show, the judges are deliberating over those lamb burgers, the Americans or the Australians. Uh, with uh, 80.5 points, uh, it goes to burger number one. The Americans! OK! Well done. Well done. So well done. Yeah. Congratulations. Victory to the visitors. But if Australian lamb producers play their cards right over the next five years, they'll be the real winners.